Anyone that I've ever asked who's been to Italy has said it's by far the best country that they've ever visited. Then I asked, what cities have you been to? To my surprise, Verona was never on anyone's list. And you would think William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet would spark the interest of people wanting to come to this city. And if not for that, the rich history and culture that this city has, Verona is more than 2,000 years old. They have monuments and statues that date back to the iniquity and Middle Ages. But I guess that's why I'm doing this video in hopes that you will put Verona on your cities to visit the next time you're in Italy. Like any other city in Italy, Verona is accessible by train. I landed in Venice and took an hour and a half train ride west, and my first stop off the train was to Castle Vecchio, which means Old Castle in Italian. Castle Vecchio was the most important military construction of the Scaliger dynasty during the Middle Ages. Now it's just a museum. The museum displays a collection of sculptures, statues, paintings, ancient weapons, ceramics, gold works, miniatures, and some old bells. Most of these sculptures are from the Romanesque period of Verona. Just went by the Casa Vecchio, the museum side. I say, if you're not into museums, skip it. Um, if you're into museums, definitely go. It's worth it. It's six euros, free with the Verona Pass. And if you're not into museums, just come up this side and get a view of the city on both sides of the Aegean River. And you can get a lot of Instagram pictures that way as well. Before you leave out of the Verona station, be sure to get your Verona card. This card gets you into all the attractions at no extra charge. This 48 hour pass cost me 25 euros. The 24 hour euro is 15 for those that are in the city for a day. It also gets you access to the local bus. So you can ride the local bus for free to get around and it gives you discounts to certain stores. So I do highly recommend that you do get this Verona car before you step out of the train station. The market is by far my favorite place to visit whenever I go to another country. It's a microcosm of life. Um, it's a good way to support the local economy, to eat local food, to immerse yourself in the culture, and just to be around the people and learn about their ways of life. And while I was out there, I did see some interesting things that I did purchase. And there was this little shop that sat on the corner that was selling wine. And my goal was to purchase a wine or alcohol in every country that I visit. And I ended up purchasing a red wine and a white wine. And they both were only six year old, so I was just like, why not? And add it to my collection. St. Anastasia Basilica is by far one of the most beautiful places that I've ever seen in my entire life. If not the best, it's up there. And I feel that the video that I got does it no justice whatsoever. And as soon as you walk in, your breath is immediately taken away.
So ladies and gentlemen, just left the church of St. Anastasia and the video does it no justice. Once you get in, it is six euros if you don't have the Verona Pass. If you have the Verona Pass, you, they just stamp it and you go in and enjoy it. You also get a free audio guide. You just download it on your phone and it talks you to you about all the things about St. Anastasia. Once again, highly recommend. 10 out of 10 recommend as a must-see. The views in here are breathtaking. Now we get to the real reason why I came to Italy and that's to eat the food. Italy is known for its pasta and I love pasta. And doing my research online to find the most authentic place to eat, one name kept coming up and that's Gina's. Gina's is known for its tortellini, which is their specialty. Although they do make other pasta, everything is made by hand. And if you get there early enough, you'll be able to see them actually making it. I ended up getting the black truffle tortellini. My mom ended up getting a mixed pasta tortellini, which that I would recommend that one. That way you get to taste all the different tortellinis that they have in the shop. And it was reasonably priced at 12 euros. And they do have vegetarian option for those who do not eat meat. You can either dine in or you can take out. Originally built in 30 AD, it was used to watch gladiators fight each other. Today, it is internationally famous for its large scale opera performances. It is one of the best preserved ancient structures of its kind and will be used for the closing ceremony of the 2026 Winter Olympics and two weeks later will be used for the opening ceremony for the 2026 Winter Paralympics. Whew. When I tell y'all, that is a walk of these steps. Like, I run, but coming up these steep hills is tiring. But could you imagine this is something back in the day where, like in Gladiator, are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? They used to have these events in this arena. Now they have concerts, operas, because of the acoustic sounds of the, the bowl-like shape. So by far, this is a great view or to be sitting in this arena here in uh, Verona. So you've seen all the monuments. Now you want to do some shopping. Right outside of the Verona arena, there's Via Manzini, which is a high-end shopping area. Now that you've done all the shopping that you can do, at the end, end of Via Manzini is Juliet's house. You walk into a courtyard and the first thing that you notice is a red mailbox for letters to Juliet. And people still do write letters to Juliet and there's a team that still answers each and every one of those letters and mail them back. You can also go up into Juliet's bedroom to overlook the balcony, which have said to inspire Shakespeare to write the play of Romeo and Juliet. There is also a statue of Ro Juliet inside of the courtyard as well that you can get a picture with. Now, I do recommend that you do get there early because that can get really packed really, really quick because that is the main attraction in Verona is Juliet's house. Everyone knows the tragic love story of Romeo and Juliet, but I'm going to introduce you to a story that you probably never heard of. This legend that goes back in the 16th century about the lover's well, Il Pozzo degli Innamorati. It is located in a little square near Piazza Erbe. And the legend goes that there was this young soldier in love with a beautiful girl that apparently didn't feel the same. They run into each other at this little well in winter and he tells her that she was as cold as the water at the bottom of the well. And in order to challenge him, the girl says, well, let's look if it was true. And desperate for love, he threw himself in the well and died in it. But she was secretly in love with him. And so she felt so guilty that she threw herself in the well too. Talk about this city and love. So I'm sitting in Piazza de Regone, which is, is totally empty right now, as you can see. But the one thing I like about Verona is that all the major attractions are not far from each other. You go right, there's an attraction, you go left, there's an attraction, you go Forward, there's a piazza, you go back, there's a piazza. 
So everything is kind of like right here by each other with the exception of Point Pietra, which is like a 20 minute walk from everywhere else. But it's worth the walk to get those views of the city and you can get a panoramic view of the city. And also I'm going to go up to the Tower of Lamberti, which my Verona Pass gets me in there for free as well. And it gives you another panoramic view of the city. Let me get out the way for this car. <laughs> runs me over but there are no street that i haven't seen any street lights in the actual city of verona where everything is everybody just goes and just walks as need be so if you are here be sure to have comfortable shoes and be aware because cars don't really stop so that's what i would tell you all as we go like i said just randomly walk and then ran across this and also there's a walking tour as well they do offer english-speaking walking tours you can go into the verona tourism website and they'll be able to you'll be able to find what type of walking tour it is how long it's going to be and things of that nature so we're going to explore this crypt a little bit even though it is closed let me get some shots for you It's my last night in Verona and I decided to go to Point Pietra and I do recommend going at night and also recommend that if the tram is working do take the tram up it's only two euros when I was there the tram wasn't working I had to walk up all those flights of steps and let's let me tell you let me tell you I had to stop a few times but once you get up to the top it's well worth it the views are breathtaking and it's peaceful and calming and you're sitting there just looking out at the city and it's like, I'm here. I'm actually here in Verona. As it's come to an end, I hope that this video inspires you to want to visit Verona and make your own memories. And I heard this on a plane once. As you go out into this world, sharing and capturing your moments, you never know who you might inspire. Traveling doesn't just take us to faraway places. It brings us closer together. Easy on an